I thought I'd make a short video here about the Cox TD engines. This is a .09, and I think the same goes for the .049, the .051, the .15 TDs. Uh, what you're looking at is uh, an engine straight out of the box here. I have a couple others that have run. Uh, one of them I got from eBay, and when I got it, the plastic carb housing here was actually cracked in the back. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a crack back there, which it's no good. I'm not sure you can really repair them, but this one, this one's kind of aged anyway. It's got a little bit, it's got kind of changed the plastic on there. It's a matte finish rather than the shiny finish here, and that can be a sign of oxidation on that. If the old fuel was in touch with this, they oxidize. Uh, this happens to be a uh, one that I was just running on a control line plane. It took a little damage, came in for a hard landing, and you can see there's a whole piece missing out of this plastic housing. So I have a couple of those on order. Uh, they're actually the aluminum ones. They're anodized aluminum ones I found on eBay. Okay, So they're being replaced. I actually had a few uh, extra one uh, carb bodies here that we can take a look at. And so the carb bodies have th three or four pieces. Uh, you actually have the aluminum flute or throat, carb throat here. You have a brass piece which is your spray bar inside there. There's a small hole for the spray bar. And you have the needle, of course. You have a needle. And that spins pretty freely, so they have a really nice setup with this spring steel. It's very rigid spring steel, never gives up, that uh, you end up sandwiching in here between these two pieces like this. Okay, so when you, when you actually crank down on this and tighten them up, it actually holds the metal tab against the needle for uh, keeping a detent there, it keeps it from spinning while the engine's running. So I'm just hand tightening this in here. Actually, it doesn't tighten in there at all. It actually just presses in there. But what you do is you sandwich that spring metal piece between the aluminum and the brass like that. That's the direction it can go in. Now I'm going to explain. I ran into a little thing here where when my control line plane hit hard the and broke the plastic carb body on there on the engine, what ended up happening is I did not have this assembled correctly and I actually had the top, this aluminum going through here and when this broke off the engine, this was this piece, this metal tab was free to fly through the air, went on its own tumble into the grass and I'm very happy that I was able to find it, a dark piece of uh, metal like this in regular green grass that wasn't even mowed that short, just kind of rough grass and whatnot. So the idea there is keep this in mind if you're going to have a hard landing and break that part of the plastic housing and your carb is going to go flying, it's much easier to find it all in one piece. So you put the pieces together by sandwiching them. Let's get this together right. So you sandwich them together like this and that holds it in place. Should this pop off, pretty much this will all stay in one piece and fly off and you'll find it because it's kind of bright and shiny. You'll be able to find that in there. So that's the correct way. You want that sandwich between there, not hanging on the bottom here. So then this this will end up going onto the car body here, like this, if you can see. Okay, so that screws into the car body, like so. Okay, and I'm going to start this one out if I can hold it in place like this, even though it's broken. Okay, and this is the position for the control line planes that you're going to want because if we're facing forward here you're going to want to have the engine with the needle up so you can adjust this and you can imagine the plane is pointed toward us and tails away from us here uh, and you want you want it oriented in this direction okay you want it, the needle up and then the fuel line actually plugs in below here and makes a loop back to the fuel tank back here so that's what the desirable or the finished setup is that you want okay so I'm gonna put this aside for a sec put those pieces aside and this is the way that the TDs normally come and if you notice something is if we bounce this the same way the needle is by default facing down and the fuel line would be up on top you can run that way but it's a little bit dangerous to get your fingers that close to the um, prop underneath this while you're trying to get a plane that's on the ground and on soft landing gear that's moving around where you can either drop the prop into the ground or get your fingers in the prop, something like that. So the idea is we want to switch this around. So I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it first. 
This one is set up exactly wrong, okay? It has the needle down, so we're going to take it off, and you would think that perhaps you can just rotate that around. Now, I've already loosened this. It was only hand tight anyway, okay? So if we take this out, it seems like, oh, all, all you really need to do is rot this, rotate this around, and now you have the needle facing up. Now, notice also this is done wrong because the metal detent, piece of metal here that forms a detent for your needle and holds it in place is free to fly off this if we have another accident and it goes flying, okay? So it looks like you would just rotate this around and all of a sudden you're in business. And I admit, that's the first way that I did it. I said, okay, we'll do it that way. I realize that my fingers are going to be pretty close to the prop because when you rotate this around, let's see if I can get this thing started here by hand, okay? So I just take the aluminum piece and you screw it into the plastic housing here and now because of the way this is oriented your fingers are very close to the prop the prop is right here okay and then something I realized today playing around with these and doing a little bit more looking at this you not only have to rotate it around like that but you can flip it over you need to flip it so that the needle is back near the cylinder and now everything's completely set up correctly now I have the metal detent sandwiched between the aluminum and the brass and I'll put this in here now. Get that started and just hand tighten it. Now, see, so see, you have to rotate it, but also flip it, and make sure that when you flip it, your metal detent piece is now sandwiched between the aluminum throat and the brass spray bar, if you will. And that's the correct way to set it up. So now this will hang typically on a control line plane like this with the needle up and away from the prop and a few line down and you want to keep your fuel tank pretty close to your engine and I'm still experimenting with that to get a nice setup on the, the little uh, Ringmaster Junior that I have this running on that's been really tough taking a lot of abuse but I've got it set up now with certain things like tie wraps that allow it to survive hard landings and whatnot there was barely any damage if it weren't for pretty hard smack in the ground with the prop, the uh, plastic housing probably would have been fine. And I thought I'd just make that video to help out anybody else playing around with these beautiful Cox engines. I love these .09s. Um, I have a few of the medallions also, but of course that's all plastic body on there. And then if, if it hits hard, there's no, not much mass here to break that off, which happens here where you have some mass sitting on that plastic car body. So it's really nice to see a brand new clean 0.09 and uh, the longer we go the fewer of these you're going to see so I usually pick them up at swap meets and things like that. Thanks a lot I hope that helps.